flashy, make me florid, make my oratory torrid. When I preach on the devil and the communists, let me pace across the stage like a silk-suited animal in a cage. Make me a televangelist. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Atheist Experience. I'm Matt Delaney. Join me this week. We got uh, Blake in New York. Blake in New York. You're on the air. Hi, sir. Oh, thank you. Uh, I just want to say that uh, I think that you guys are doing very important work. Um, uh, you know, a lot of people, I'm from uh, New York, of course, up in a lot of people, you know, who aren't brought up in a religious community, they think that it's like kind of this like kind of novelty, kind of fringe thing. And um, it's it's just as it's just as severe in New York, in many areas of New York, as it is in a lot of the the South and the rest of the country. Um, I'm spending the holidays right now in North Carolina, Wilmington, North Carolina, and um, I came on to say a couple of things. One that I think you guys are just doing very important work, and that it needs to be done. Thanks. Um, and uh, that um, I uh, have a really funny apologetic. I uh, I met a friend of mine who was a, a fundamentalist extremist and a political anarchist, and I said that's a strange combination of uh, ideals. And I and I started asking him all kinds of questions, and and I I asked him, so you really believe that the world was drained and flooded in 40 days, and that Noah was able to transport all 10 billion species of animals onto their correct various locations on the globe? And to me, well, perhaps God used a uh, a vortex or black hole type device to put all of the, the animals in inside the ark. Oh, that's awesome! That's I knew so there, there's, a, there's an invisible black hole or vortex between Mount no, it's Ararat like, it's like and the Dungeons and Australia. Dragons, the bag of holding, where you can just, a little bag that you can just keep stuffing a million things into. Yeah, it is like a bag of holding. I actually said that to him because he was entertaining That's, that's the well. boat. The that's boat's awesome. like a bag I'm, of holding. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know. Uh, it's, that's, yeah, it's funny. But uh, the, well, uh, the reason I really came on was I have a short message that I have, that I have to say, and it's, it's, too, it's, it's, just, it's addressing that, that even passive, passive belief is dangerous to a functioning society. And that a lot of, you know, there, okay, so I basically say, um, I, I know that there's a, a fine line between healthy debate and reverse evangelizing. I know that it's difficult to hold the mantle of live and let live when we refuse to just ignore believers who commit unconstitutional and sometimes borderline treasonous acts on behalf of their faith. However, this is a message to those believers and non who think that the, the radical fringe calls attention to itself and gives passive believers a bad name. I'm here to claim that any such belief, passive or radical, is downright dangerous for a healthy and civilized society. The claim that passive belief isn't hurting anyone and should just be ignored is, to me, enabling and encouraging delusion. I know the D word is instantly offensive to a Christian, but I'm using it in a dictionary definition to describe a phenomena. Quote, a false, persistent belief maintained in spite of evidence to the contrary. No, I'm not claiming that there is evidence to disprove God, but there is another type of evidence that we frivolously take for granted and that we see proven to us all the time, the presence of gravity and the absence of vampires. Um, a normal, skeptical human mind cannot conclude anything with absolute certainty. This closes the mind off to being wrong. Being wrong is the single most important thing, not only for our growth, but for our survival. Without accepting that we were once wrong to stick our fingers in a light socket it, as a toddler is why we're still around. We also, hopefully, had a loving and rational parent to reinforce the correction. This micro-society, the household, represents a healthy and functional environment. Both parent and toddler can safely conclude that it is unsafe to stick their finger in the light socket, even without the knowledge of an electrician, because there is still evidence based on observation and experience. The next time you stick your finger in a socket, raspberry jam could come out. It's possible, but you aren't going to base your behavior and decisions on what's possible, only what's probable. My point is gravity and how offensively we take it for granted. Most of us make every decision under the assumption that gravity is going to do its job. We don't think for a second that gravity's rules will simply stop applying. We also don't entertain the possibility because of how vastly improbable it, uh, improbable it is. Uh, gravity has done its job 100% of the time since the beginning of time, so that corroborating evidence is enough to not only conclude that we will continue, it will continue to work, uh, but not to alter behavior or take preventative measures in case it doesn't. Herein lies the pro problem with a theist mentality, even a passive one. There are people who do ignore gravity. Uh, there are people who hurl themselves off of buildings because they're convinced beyond any doubt that the great blue unicorn will fly them away to Candy Mountain. Of course, when the, he hits the pavement and dies, 
the society circles around the body and unanimously agrees that this man was crazy and delusional. We come to a consensus as a rational people. The same thing should happen when it comes to claims of a virgin birth and walking on water. But we, on a massive scale, not only enable, but encourage that belief by the hundreds of millions. The man on the roof ignored the staggering evidence supported that supported gravity. But more specifically, he inserted an irrational variable into an otherwise rational thought process. The variable, the one based on faith, actually caused him harm. Christians on any level, whether or not they know it, are doing the same thing. It is possible that the claims in the Bible are true, just as possible as it is that a vampire will bite you in your sleep. If both beliefs are faith-based and both ignore clear evidence of things like gravity and physics with no evidence, neither argument is any more le or less valid than the other. However, you will take preventative measures to save yourself from hell, but you won't take preventative measures against something just as probable like a vampire. I, 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 I completely that. agree with you, but this is no longer a short message. I, I think you made a, a, a terrific point. It's, it was just, it's going on a little bit long for the purpose of the program, uh, but... Uh, which, which brings me to one other thing, and, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and let you go, Blake. I appreciate the call, but we get people waiting on the, on the line from other, other places, and I want to make one quick point, but I am agree with, with you there, and I thank you for calling. I really do. Um, we're trying to cut down on the number of calls of, from people who agree with us. Well. Streaming the show out over the Internet is something that, we, that we've done um, so that people don't necessarily have to wait for the podcast, and there's interaction, there's a chat room on there where you can talk. We start broadcasting before the show starts so people can call in and ask questions and interact ahead of time. That's all great. And don't get us wrong. We love the yeah. calls from all the folks who are, who are like, good job, you know, you're doing great. We, you know, that's don't terrific. necessarily stop calling, but yeah. most of you started liking this show because of the conversations with... Uh, the believers. People who disagree with us. Yeah. The contentious calls, the ones where we, you know, mm -hmm. why don't we die when the sun goes down. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not necessarily saying we, we want bad apologists calling mm -hmm. in. And, I, and we definitely don't want to stop the calls from people who agree with us. But we've got to keep them short and move on, especially with, we have three phone lines, and if they're tied up with people from out of town who want to call in to say, good job, and I agree with you, and here's my take on it, uh, then we're not going to get the guy who's calling in to explain why he believes in a God. Make me florid, make my oratory talk.